All right, so our plan is we are going to complete the problems for day one and two. There are going to be sections that we omit and cross off because we don't typically do the logs chapter with you guys anymore just because you hit that so hard in algebra two. So there'll be some things I kind of cross off. Tomorrow, those of you that are here, we're going to do just some extra problems on those topics. And you have two delta assignments that are on those all the final exam review topics that we review today. And then again, tomorrow, we're just going to review the same topics again. And then those assignments are due next Tuesday night. And you'll have your first final exam quiz next Friday. Okay. Questions before we kind of jump in and start? So you got your formula sheet, calculator. And the first thing I want you to check on your calculator, because we are going to be doing um, yep, a little bit of trig today, is you need to verify that your calculator is in degrees. So immediately on your calculator, especially since some of you have taken SATs, ACTs, and possibly reset this, make sure that your calculator is in degrees, and eh, you're really not going to need it for polar either. So if you want to put it back to function mode, that'd probably be preferred too. And then make sure A plus B I is highlighted as well. Bless you. And then you should be good to go. Won't have to make any changes unless, of course, you reset your calculator. So everyone's in degrees. Okay. All right. So we're going to jump in and start reviewing for your final. Now, I don't want you to hold me to this just because you guys know how things change around here. But as of right now, there is a strong possibility that your final exam will take place in class. Again, I will let you know when it's verified for sure. But what we have kind of said we prefer for you guys, because I know I've asked, I asked some students yesterday, I'm sorry, I know most of you weren't here, but they said they would prefer to take their final June 9th and 10th in class and then be done. Is that okay? So I will let you know once that's confirmed. I know those of you that are taking OCC history, there is an exam for that class on June 18th for sure. Or maybe it's even the 21st, I can't remember, but for you guys, we're trying really hard to get you on the 9th and the 10th. So please try to make sure that you are going to be here on the 9th and the 10th, okay? And hopefully I can confirm that. I don't know, maybe next week, we'll see. So first, number one, and if it helps too, I'll write down next to each of these which chapter this comes from. So in case you wanna kind of look back for some more. So number one, you wanna find the ordered pair that represents the vector. So vectors for chapter eight. So again, if you're looking back through your notes, that one's chapter eight. So vector from two, negative three to four, 12. So we need to do this formula. So you're gonna go x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. And if you take a peek at your formula sheet, that is not one that's gonna be given to you. Okay, so that's a formula you do have to memorize, but again, I think it's fairly straightforward. So all you have to do for this one is we plugged in, so we did four minus two and you did 12 minus the negative three, and then that's it. So answer is gonna be two and 15. That was a nice, easy concept from your vectors. Then letter B, you're gonna go and find your magnitude. Anyone remember the formula or what we do with those? I know it's been a long time. So you're gonna take these and you're gonna square them. So I'm gonna go two squared, and plus the 15 squared. And then answer is, just got a calculator. What is it? 229 is your magnitude. So that's it on your first one. How do we feel so far? Pretty good? Okay. So number two, a system question. I'm thinking where we did this. This would have been your chapter 10, your conics. 
Again, I'm just putting those there if you find that to be helpful. So you want to solve your system algebraically, so substitution or elimination here. You guys remember what that first equation represents? X squared plus Y squared. Circle. Mm -hmm. And what about your second one? It has X squared, Y squared, so it technically it has an A and C, but they are different. Your choices, it could be a parabola, it could be an ellipse, it could be a hyperbola. You remembering? Close, hyperbola is opposite signs. Yes. Good. That goes good. So then from here, I am going to, again, either do, you can do the substitution, the elimination. I'm gonna say, let's go for elimination. I'm gonna take this top equation. Again, you have many options to do these. I'm going to go negative four. So all the way through this one, I would get a negative four X squared and then minus the four Y squared and then equal to a negative 16. Underneath that, I would have a nine X squared plus a four Y squared. So that will force that elimination equal to 36. So add those straight down. Nice easy question. So you've got 5x squared, y's cancel, and then 20. So you're going to take both sides, divide by 5, up to you if you want to show that or not. Your final exam, you have a lot of multiple choice, and then you have approximately 10 long answer questions. So you've got x squared equal to 4. So therefore, x is equal to positive and negative two. When you solve a system, you need an X and you also need your Y value as well. So you're gonna go up, find your Y value, should be able to fit it, if you have enough space here. So find your Y value for both respective X's. So you're gonna sub in. Your easiest one to sub in is probably your first. So you're gonna go two squared plus Y squared equal to four, subtract that over. So y squared equal to zero. So first value is y equals zero. So ordered pair two zero. And then what you're gonna notice is obviously if you plug in the negative two, negative two squared is still four. So this is gonna give you the same exact answer. So I'm just gonna show that. So again, this is another y equals zero. So your second would be negative two, zero. All right, how's number two okay still? Okay, so number three. This one you probably are a little bit less familiar with. You want to write a vector equation for the line that passes through P and is parallel to A, which is three comma negative four. So this is on your formula sheet. Let's see, where are they? It's like top left corner. So if you look at your formula sheet, top left corner, it is just to kind of point it out to you, it's the first one. So you're looking for your equation that says x minus x1, comma, y minus y1 is equal to, and we have a t, and then you're going to go here, a sub 1, comma, a sub 2. That is not a formula that you need to memorize. And your vectors are still chapter eight, just like the first question. That came from eight. So all you have to do for this one is just simply sub these in. So I have here X, and then I'm gonna go plus two. And then next one's gonna be Y minus one. And that is equal to t. And then you're going to go 3 and then negative 4. Okay. That's as far as you need to go for that one. So you can leave your answer just like that. Now, what you do down below is you're going to take this one step further. So you're going to take this part right here and you're going to set it equal to t times this 3. 
So I go x plus 2 to write the parametric equal to 3t. And then I'm going to solve for x equals. So x would be equal to, you have 3t minus 2. And you're going to do the same thing with the y. So I'm going to take my y minus 1, and I'm going to say equal to t distributed to the negative 4. So it kind of lines up like that. So I go y minus 1, and that is equal to negative 4 times t. And then you're going to take this plus 1 plus 1. And second equation is y equals negative 4t plus 1. Yeah, parametric means you're going to have the T in there for your equations. How's that one okay? Okay. I know some of it, it's definitely been a long time. The vectors we did back in like January, so long time ago. All right, up to the top now. And again, keep that formula sheet next to you. Now we move into polar. So polar is your chapter nine content. Chapter nine. And you want to find polar notation for given rectangular. Polar is R and theta. And you want to convert this into rectangular. I'm sorry, we want to convert it into polar. And we are given rectangular, which is X and Y. Okay, so first I have the point four, negative four. So over four, down four, so I am a triangle in quadrant four. So over four, down four, like that. So here's four, negative four. Next, you wanna look at your formula sheet because I'm pretty sure this was on there. Let's see. Yes, we did. So we are looking for your R value. So if you guys look one, two, three, four boxes down, you're gonna see R equals the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So that's where we start. So R equals, and we're gonna go square root of X squared plus Y squared. So you don't need to memorize that either. So R is equal to, we're gonna go four squared plus, technically negative four squared is the same thing here. So R is equal to square root of 32. Next, what you need to do is you need to find theta. So if you look right at your formula sheet, is it in the same box? I think it was. Yes. So you're going to do tan inverse of your Y value over your X value. So in your calculator, you are going to type in second tangent, and everyone should be good. We just changed those two degrees, and I'm going to go four over four. Again, ignore the negative for a moment. That just tells you your quadrant placement, so you're in quadrant four here. All right, so second tan of four over four, which really means second tan of one, or maybe someone remembers. 45, good. This is one of those special angles. And then the last thing you have to do is place it into quadrant four. So I'm going to go 360 minus 45 equal to 315 degrees. And I did not say that you had to write that in radians, so it's fine if you leave it just like that. So your answer, you're going to put it in the same format, so it's an ordered pair. So we have the square root of 32 and 315 degrees. How's that one? My guess is some of the polar stuff is probably going to be the polar stuff and the trig stuff is probably what you're going to remember the least of and probably need the most practice with. But again, you've got plenty of time still. So letter B, again, I'm given rectangular. So this means the same thing as plus the zero I. So I'm going to think about plotting this here. And again, I need to convert this to R and theta. 
Only difference is it's really not an ordered pair if you think of it like that. So I would go over to right here. So I'm there. So I'm currently at zero degrees. Now I need to find my R. So R is equal to, and again, for this one, you really don't have to show this. You would basically be showing two squared plus zero squared. And then if you want to, so R is equal to two. And then here's how you're gonna write this answer. So I'll give you two options. You can do whatever you prefer. So the first thing we did is we went two and then cos zero plus I sine zero. That's totally fine. Or you can use the abbreviated version that we talked about. So, or you can go two cos plus I sine of zero. Okay, so either or full credit, up to you. This one's obviously shorter. So I'll kind of keep doing them both ways just so you get adjusted to that again. All right, so letter C. I am looking to again change from rectangular into polar. So I need to swap out the X and I need to swap out the Y. So you're gonna look again at your formula sheet and you're gonna see that X is equivalent to R cos theta. So that gets substituted right in. Was that a minus? I'm sorry, I just messed that up on you. Was it a minus? Yes. So minus the six, and then in for your six, you're gonna go R sine theta. And this is equal to just one. So you're done. You don't have to do anything else with that one. So you've switched it into polar form. So answer is just two R cos theta, and then minus six R sine theta, equal to one, so conversion to polar. All right, so letter D, you got a little bit more work to do here. So on this one, I'm gonna think about, I need my R and my theta. I like to sketch out these pictures because I think it helps. So I have, let's see, second quadrant placement for this one. So I went over the one and then up, you're thinking about it like this. Now you keep going, you're gonna find your R and your theta. So I'm gonna say need, again, your R and your theta. So R is equal to same exact formula we did like two questions above. So you're gonna have X squared plus the Y squared. So R is equal to I'm gonna go negative one squared plus radical three squared. So plus the radical three squared. Should work out really nice again too. So I have R is equal to square root of one plus three. So square root of four, R is equal to just plain two. Same thing above, you need to find theta. So to find theta, you're gonna do an inverse tan function of y over x. And again, the negative is going to be used after, afterwards just for your quadrant placement. So in your calculators, we want to go second tan of radical 3 over 1. So obviously, you can just do radical 3. This is another special one. You guys get it? Second tan of radical 3? 60. Yep. This is a 60 degree angle now. Then you're gonna place it into quadrant two. So quadrant two, we do 180 minus 60. And again, I didn't state that you needed these answers in radians, so you can leave this in degrees. So this is 120. All right, so that is equal to theta. Your answer, again, you can write two ways. So you can go two, and then cos of 120 
plus I sine 120 or the abbreviated version. I'll say or again. You can go to this 120. And that's again degrees. That one okay? Okay, so letter E is going to be very similar just because, again, I'm sure the polar stuff is, you know, going to take some time to kind of come back to you. So now I have radical three and then the negative one I. So this one, as far as your quadrants go, positive and then negative. So we're down here this time. So you're thinking about quadrant four. So you need an R and you need a theta. So I'm going to go R equals square root. So we have radical three squared. And then plus negative one squared is obviously just the same as one squared because it becomes positive. So R value here is just three plus the one. Again, if you can just jump to that answer, that's fine. So this one's two again. Now you're going to find theta. So to find theta, you're going to use your calculator to do an inverse tan function of y over x. And this is going to be another special angle as well. So we're going to go second tan of 1 divided by radical 3. So this one is not 60, but it's close. You guys remember? 30, yep, good. So this one, our reference angle is 30 degrees. You're gonna place it appropriately in quadrant four. So we're gonna go 360 minus 30. So this answer is 330. All right, so answer below, I'm just gonna abbreviate this one. So I have two post plus I sine of 330. All right, how are those two, okay? All right, next one's fast again. You have x squared plus y squared, and this is equal to nine. What type of conic is this? Circle, yep, perfect. x squared plus y squared, again, has a substitution for it. That is just equivalent to r squared. So right now we know r squared is equal to nine. And r obviously stands for a radius in this capacity. So r is just equal to three. So square root of nine. You don't want to use the negative. So we would just get from this one r equal to three. So pretty quick and easy on that one. How's page one? Okay, so far? Okay, back side. Another conic in number seven, we are going to cross off. Again, you do not have to do the logs. You did so much with that last year. All right, you are given the equation of a hyperbola. So find the coordinates of the center. So my center is going to be located at negative two and positive one. And I'm going to start writing some information because we've got some space right there. So when you have your hyperbola, you're going to see your minus in between these. Your a squared value, in case you forgot, is always the denominator of the first term. So I have a squared equal to 25. So therefore, a, when we did these, take the square root plus and minus, so 5. So it's beneath my y. So this means that we have a vertical transverse axis. So this is the vertical transverse axis case. All right, my B squared value is the nine. Again, just using that space to write some things out. So B squared is equal to nine. So B is equal to plus and minus three. All right, so next, you want to find the coordinates of your vertices. 
So because I have that vertical transverse axis, where do we add the A value onto? The X or the Y? The Y, yep. So my vertices, I'm gonna do negative two, comma, and I'm gonna go one plus and minus the five. So give me two vertices here. I have negative two and then six. And then next I have negative two and negative four. All right, so there's those answers. Next answers. I am looking for the coordinates of the foci. So equation for your foci. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And that one you are gonna have to know because that is not, I was gonna say that is not listed anywhere on your formula sheet. So I continue. So I have C squared is equal to a squared was 25 and B squared was nine. So C squared is equal to, so I have 34. So therefore C is equal to plus or minus the square root of 34. Okay. And again, where are you gonna add that onto? The X or the Y? Mm -hmm. The Y, very good. So I'm going to take my center, which was here. So I'm going to go negative two. And then we're going to go one plus and minus square root of 34. If you want, you can leave it just like that. That'd be no problem. All right, next. I want to find the equations of my asymptotes. So next, I use y minus k is equal to plus or minus a over b and then x minus h. And then all you got to do is plug these in and then you'll make your picture below. So y minus k, so my center was, I lost it, where was it? Thank you, negative two, one, let me write that here. It's hard when it doesn't all fit on the screen. So I'm gonna go y minus one is equal to plus or minus, a was five, b was three from above, and then you're gonna go x plus two. All right, and then the last thing you're going to throw down here is just your graph. So my center was located at negative 2, 1. And my vertices were, again, this is a hyperbola, so I was only going to have the two. Vertices were at negative 2, 6, and negative 2, negative 4. So negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And again, it's going to look like this. And then one, two, three, and four. All right. And then the last thing you have to put in here are your asymptotes. So to do those, you're going to look at your center and you're going to apply the slope. So my slope is five and then over three. So I go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Back the other way, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. And I'm going to just put a dashed line to indicate my asymptote here. And then same thing in the other direction. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. And then one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. All right, so I write back like that. And I think you got everything on this one. I mean, if you want to put your foci on here too, you could, but you just have to get a decimal equal one. All right, how do we feel on that one, okay? 
Uh, there'll be more conics kind of as you go through these two. Um, so number six here at the bottom. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to give you a chapter for this one in case you wanted it. This is chapter 10. All right. So next. Down to number six. All right, number six, you are back to vectors. You're back to chapter eight. And just to remind you, your final does not cover anything we did in the beginning of the year. So your final exam starts with chapter seven onwards. And seven is all your trig stuff. All right, so write the order pair that represents you here. So I need to take V and triple it. So three V is equivalent. So I have six and then negative 15. And then next I'm gonna take my W and double that. So that would be six and negative two. And then I'm going to just take these and subtract. So again, it's up to you if you wanna show everything or not. So I get six minus six is zero, negative 15 minus negative two. So I would have negative 13. Easy. Yeah, I was gonna say, you could use your calculator if you really needed to as well. I don't really think you guys need to though. All right, up to the top. You may omit number seven. So all of seven, we are not testing you on, so you can cross those off. You did a lot with that again last year. But number eight, we are gonna do. All right, so eight. Given these ordered pairs, order triple that represent your vector. So same thing, you are back to chapter eight again. So ordered pair. So I've got the three this time instead. So it's just like the first problem we did, but instead you're gonna go X2 minus X1 plus you Y2 minus Y1 and then Z2 minus Z1. So I'm gonna go here, negative one minus nine, and then five minus eight, and then 11 minus five. So answer, negative 10, uh, negative three, and six. Write it as a sum of unit vectors. So that gives me negative 10 I, no work you need to show here and then minus the 3j, and then plus the 6k. Okay. So order triple notation versus sum of unit vector notation. Um, and then number nine, you are doing magnitude again. So same difference, you're just gonna take all of these. So I'm gonna go three squared, the four squared, it's gonna become positive anyways, and the five squared. All right, what does that come back as? 25 and 25, I got squared of 50. And no, you don't need to simplify that. All right, how are those, okay? All right, so moving into your next sheet, and these have a lot of cross-offs to them too. Number one, two, and three, review what we literally just did so we can hopefully fly through those really quick. And they're good review too for those of you that haven't done your test yet. Don't forget about those. All right, so next three terms of arithmetic sequence here. I would add, so four and a half plus one and a half would be six, and then 7.5 and then plus 1.5 would be I'm not gonna show work for that because I don't really think you need it. Um, so number two, find the 63rd term of an arithmetic sequence. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. This one's arithmetic. So you're taking these, common difference of? Plus three, yep, I'm sorry, I spoke too soon. So this is the formula for explicit. So you're gonna go a sub one plus d times n minus one 
And this one I'm going to do quickly. So a sub 63 is equal to a sub 1 is negative 7 plus 3. And I'm going to go right to it, 63 minus 1. That goes into your calculator, like literally the whole thing, just like it's written. And that answer comes back as 179. And I don't really foresee you to have any difficulty with those first two. And to be consistent, those both came from chapter 12. Same thing with this one. This one's also 12. All right, so number three next. Find the sum of the first 15 terms of the series. So is this one arithmetic or geometric? Yep, arithmetic, good. So this one's arithmetic. This formula is on your sheet. I think it's the left column. So the sum is equal to, so we've got here n and then a sub one plus a sub n divided by two. So the sum of the first 15 terms, meaning this is a finite series, is equal to, I have 15, and then a sub one is negative three, and then you got a problem. So your problem is you don't know what the 15th term is. So you have to go off to the side and calculate that. So the 15th term, is equal to a sub one, negative three, plus my common difference two, and then to the 15 minus one. So the 15th term is equal to negative three plus two times 14. So that's 28, 28 minus three would give me 25. And then you just have to throw that into your calculator and get your sum of your first 15 terms. All right, so that works out to be, I got 165. Okay, any problems on three? Okay, you may cross off number four, all of it. Uh, you may cross off seven and go up. And we're gonna do number five, but you don't need all that space. Equation of a circle in standard form. So this is back to your conics, which is chapter 10. Equation of a circle is X minus H squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where h and k represent the center of your circle and r is your radius. You have it all. All you have to do is plug this in. So my answer becomes x plus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equal to 25. How's that one simple? That's it. So six is another conic. So this conic, if you look at your A and your C, so I have a negative six X squared and a three Y squared that's positive. So your signs are opposite and the values are not the same. Do you guys remember what this one is? I say we just did it. So close, hyperbola. Hyperbola. And again, that is always going to have A and C, um, and they're not going to be equal, and they're going to be opposite signs. So opposite signs and those coefficients are not equal. Um, bottom question I had you cross off. So we are over to the back. Any problems down the six? Okay. All right, number eight are your limits. You just did a ton of these too. So your limits 
I mean, we did them in a couple chapters, but most recently we did them in 12. So again, I'm looking at, in this case, just that leading term here. So I would have the limit as X approaches infinity. And again, if I think about cubing this out, I have X cubed plus insignificant terms that don't matter, and then over X squared. You're under no obligation to show it, but if you wanted to, you would divide each term by X cubed. And then just say what this limit is equivalent to. So X squared over X cubed. The bottom is going to approach zero, which means your limit does not exist. Perfect. All right, so letter B. I, again, I'm just looking at that leading term. So if I think about three n and square it, I get nine n squared plus, and then next, two n squared over. And then what does this one become? I think you guys know this by now. Nine over two, good. Next. All right, so this limit. So I would distribute that out again if you'd like to. And you're just going to think about these. So I would have x cubed minus the x squared. And again, you're going to divide everything in this case by x cubed. So I would have x squared over x cubed. And then minus 3x over x cubed. Cubed, sorry. And then over x cubed over x cubed. And then again, same deal. All right, how about this one? What's this top going to approach here? Zero. Mm -hmm. And zero on, over anything is equal to zero. Okay, so next you have nine and 10, and that is it for today. So number nine is a force question. We did this with your vectors. So this is back to eight. And you're gonna need your formula sheet for this one. So when you saw forces, what we drew were parallelograms to represent these scenarios. So I have a force of 100 Newtons. and another force acting on that object of 80 Newtons. Again, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. The angle in between them is 40. Resultant force cuts through this, but remember it does not bisect that angle. So we didn't actually use the 40. What did we use instead for this type? You guys remember? Yep. This one right here, 140. The measure of your resultant force is asking you for this. So what we kind of did was sketch this on the side. You have the 80, you have the 100, the 140, and you are looking for the measure of your resultant force. So this is a side angle side scenario. So if you look at your formula sheets, this was the law of cosines. So we did side angle side was law of cosines. All right, so I'm gonna continue this. Law of cosines is on there. Where did I put it? Top of the page, kind of draw your eye to it. It's the right-hand column, second one down. So we're gonna go X squared is equal to, and I'm gonna plug them in. So 80 squared plus 100 squared minus two times 80 times 100, and then cosine 140. 
because there is nothing unknown on the right hand side, you can type the entire thing in. So you type the entire thing in and then take the square root of that. And that answer, just to save you time, because we will do more of these in the future too. That answer came back as, actually, I don't have it written down somewhere. All right, that comes back as 169 points. And again, I'm gonna continue on to part B for this one, so I don't wanna round that off too much. Point 2829. Okay. All right, and then next. So then we need to find the angle formed by the larger force and the resultant. So I'm going to take my picture from above and just include in here what we have left. All right, so here's the 100. Here is the resultant force that you just found, 2829, and 140, and the 80. Now you did not have to use law of cosines again. There was a quicker way to do this one. Do you guys remember? Good, law of sines, he's right. So I am now looking for the angle between the larger and the resultant, which is right here, a Y. And then absolutely, I'm gonna do law of sines with that relationship. And then that relationship right there as well. Okay, so for law of sines, it's on your formula sheet, first box on the upper right-hand corner. So I go, actually I'll write that. So here, this one's sides. So I go 169.2829 divided by the sine of 140 is equal to 80 over the sine of y. And you are going to cross multiply and solve just make sure you're confident with your calculator work there. And that answer comes back as 17.68 degrees. Okay, just like that. All right, how's the force question? Okay. All right, and then last, we'll do this one really quick. Parabola. This is also your products. So equation of a parabola is given. So I have y squared, y plus five squared equals negative eight and then x minus three here. So coordinates of the vertex, fast and easy. Your vertex occurs at three, negative five. Next, that negative eight is equal to four times your p value. So therefore p is equal to negative two. Now, this is a y squared parabola. So how does it open, up and down or sideways? Sideways, yep. And it's a negative p, so it looks like this. So coordinates of your focus. So you gotta start plotting this now. So I have a vertex at negative, um, positive three, negative five. So positive three, right here. And that P value was just equal to, what was it, two? So you're gonna be here for your focus, that's your answer, and here for your directrix. All right, so answer for your directrix, one, two, three, four, five. Directrix is X equals five. Focus, is one negative five. An axis of symmetry is right here. And that looks to me like, what do we got? Y equals negative five. And the last part here asks you what is called the lattice rectum. What this is, is a value you've already been working with doesn't come up all that often. 
but this just means the absolute value of that negative eight from above in your equation. So this stands for the width of your parabola. So that would just be equal to eight. Was that it on that one? That was all the parts? Yes, I think we got them all. Okay, so again, my people that are not here tomorrow, just make sure you get those delta assignments done that are on these topics that we just covered today. Your test needs to be completed by Sunday night as well. And then some of you have some delta stuff that still needs to be finished up tonight. Okay. 